What's good, Grey Gang? We're here today, and we're actually gonna look at something, you know, that's pretty awesome, okay? So, you know, in the last video, whenever I was out here, you know, washing the truck in the rain? Well, little did I know that at the moment, that rain was actually bringing in, like, the biggest flood I've ever seen in my lifetime, and I'm not even kidding about that guy. Like, the flood that has hit us right now is the biggest I have ever seen in my lifetime, which, you know, as y'all know what I showed in the last video, I live on top of a mountain, so it really don't affect me, but it does in the bottom of the hollers, and I'm actually gonna take y'all down to show you and like guys i'm not kidding about this kentucky is flooded right now or at least you know the part where i'm from which is basically right beside the river Yeah, guys, here it is. I guess this right here is my new lake. I mean, over there you can see some flooded bushes. There's probably some nice largemouth over there. Right here you got a submerged roadbed with steep drops on both sides, so there should be some good smallmouth, you know, hanging around those ledges. As for over there in the field, you know, we do have some good spawning flats, so the generations should keep repeating itself. But like I was saying, how I'm really not affected because I do live on the ridge, I really can't go anywhere because, well, there's there's water across the road. And I mean, I just step over here a little bit, but right over there do you see that thing right there like that thing sticking up i was actually there like this summer and we was actually trapping in a minor hole here's what it looked like you know whenever none of this water was there we're still testing making our way right down here to this part of the creek i've honestly not trapped this well very much at all yeah for real guys like this water right here it is up a lot and like i was saying it is by far the highest it's ever been in my lifetime it's crazy guys it's crazy you got some flooded bushes wonder what the minners are doing right now like for real i bet the minners are having a field day bro they can swim and find food for miles out here but yeah guys this is stinking crazy but we do have a nice little point right here which should have some good bass out there on the edge but anyways like last video how i was saying there's good and everything you just have to find it just like today guys there's good and everything we just have to find it and find it i did Oh yeah, we're about to get us a good one right here. Surely we can catch something. I mean, why, why wouldn't I? Like I was saying, this is a really good spot. I mean, it's got a good hard bottom right here. As you can see, that's pretty hard bottom, I'd say. Probably about as hard as you can get out here in the natural world. I mean, right now I'm just using a little underspin, but I'm actually dragging it right here, hoping that maybe you want to, you know, snatch it up off the bottom. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to fish this right here. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but what this is is where you have deep water on this side, deep water on this side, and it's like a really shallow hump right here. And then what that does is whenever the bait fish wants to come from this side over to this side, what they have to do is they have to come over that really shallow point, which gives bass and other, you know, predator fish a really good chance to ambush their prey, because they can just sit on one side. Once the bait fish will come from over here as soon as they get up here in shallow water they don't have much room to run so they'll just come up there and ambush them so this right here this is a really good spot i think the only problem is that well i don't i, I really don't think there's any bass here i'm just gonna be honest with you guys i don't think there's any bass in the creek to start with but then again you never know and i'm gonna come over here now i'm gonna fish some of these flooded bushes you know just swim it around like a little swim bait, you know, just, just try to see if we want to come out and, you know, snatch it. And believe it or not, guys, about a year ago this time, I actually did catch a bass out of flooded bushes. Here it was right here. Here's the footage. I didn't get the catch on camera, but here it is after I hooked it and got it in the boat. Okay. Get that ruler up under there. Up under. Under the console. Hey. Yeah, he's 15. Wow. Yeah, guys, that's pretty crazy. But there was one thing. Like, that was at a lake. This this is not at a lake. But, I'm, you know, you never know. They could still be bass in here. I see potential. I definitely see the potential. I'll tell you what, guys. I ain't got any bites over here. Been over here for about five minutes. Didn't get any bites in the bushes. Didn't get any bites on the road bed. I'm going to head over here to probably the deepest part of the lake, which is probably about 30, 40 foot right now, to be honest. But I'm just going to head on over here and see if, you know, I can't get any on the deeper bite. Oh, yeah, here we go. Just got to cast over this fence right out there. Let it sink for a little bit. Should, you know, take it a few seconds to get to the bottom, but then I'm just going to bounce it around and see if I can't maybe feel some rocks or something down there. And that'll be best case scenario. Maybe we can get us one, pull him up out of the deep water, and, you know, maybe we can get a school fired up down there. You never really know about this kind of stuff. They could be a school down there. We're out here targeting largemouth, but, you know, I'd take a striper or maybe even a white bass about right about now. I'm not going to be picky. I'll take anything. 
Uh oh. Oh my goodness, I've got one. I've got one, boys. I was thinking. Never mind it. I do have some. Not exactly a fish, but I'll tell you what. Whenever I go home, I'm going to tell my mom I caught one and she ain't going to know no different because she wasn't here. But I will say, one cool thing about this is, you know, normally out on the lake, you know, you got trees to get hung up in, you got rocks, maybe even a stump every now and again. Here today, what I mainly got to worry about is a guardrail and a stop sign. That's, that's pretty cool. Not going to lie. Pretty cool situation. I'd say that's a pretty good problem to have is trying not to get hung up in a stop sign. Pretty unique, I guess. I'm definitely getting good bottom contacts. Feels like good hard composition. Should get a hit any second now. Uh-oh. I saw some bubbles. I saw some bubbles. There's definitely one over there. I promise. And it's really cool because believe it or not, there's no traffic. And I mean, to be completely honest, I say the best part about this is I have absolutely no competition out here trying to catch these fish. Like nobody's even out here. I don't know what they're doing. Everybody's sitting in their house. I don't know what they're thinking. They know they can't catch fish sitting in the house. I don't know what they're doing. If they won't catch one, they gotta get out here and, you know, put in the time, put in the effort. If you wanna be a dedicated fisherman, you gotta get out here and wet your lines no matter what the conditions. Hey, I may not be catching them out here, but I'm sure somebody is. They may not be fishing submerged road beds. They may not even be in the state of Kentucky, but there is one thing for sure. Somebody is out there catching them, son. Somebody's laying on them and swarping on them daily. I hate to say it, but it ain't me. While we're out here fishing, you know, I mean, I just want to ask y'all, like, if you're not subscribed already, join the Gray Gang and stinking smash the subscribe button. And if you're liking the fishing here today and liking the fishing videos, just smash the like button. That way I'll know, you know, whenever it floods again, I can come out here and, you know, try to swarp on some pigs. But for real, guys, smash the like button. Why? I don't know. Just do it. If YouTube didn't put a like button for you. Just sit there and look at it. Hit the thing. If I can hit the stop sign, you gotta hit it three times, though. Thank you, man. I just gotta buy it. But anyways, guys, we're gonna throw in the towel right here. We definitely had a good time. Definitely had a few missed opportunities here. I believe I missed like an eight pounder over there in the bushes. But you know, guys, you can't catch them all. But anyways, Greg, Gang, I'll tell you what. We're gonna head on back to the house and we may even do a little bit of moto vlogging, I guess. Just because there's honestly nothing much else to do. I obviously can't go anywhere. And with it being as wet as it is outside, there's really not much else to do. But you know, just ride around on the four wheeler and you know, just try to, I don't know, have some fun. <laughs> Okay, okay, so enough of my little uh, four-wheeler riding montage, I guess you would say. There's one thing on this channel that we've not done in a long time, and it's, um, uh, well, 
Check trail cameras. Now this is a camera right here, which was originally on the, you know, the wheat mill pile. Then it turned into a corn pile. Now it's just a, now it's just a scattered out piece of ground with a salt block in the middle. But time and time again, you know, we had deers coming into it. And as y'all may or may not know, in Kentucky right now, deer season's over. So even if we do get some big bucks on camera, it's not going to matter really much at all. However, it will give me hope that they are alive for next season. But I mean, to be completely honest, I'm going to be surprised if it even turns on. I mean, it's been out here so long and just... I don't know. I'll just... Hey, there we go. We have 86 pictures. Not a whole lot for as long as it's been out here, but hopefully those 86 are, you know, of something good. We got like three different deer right there, but then again, that was a long time ago. Like I said, guys, I've not checked this camera in like a really long time. Hey, whoa, 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 bro. That's back whenever it snowed. There ain't no snow here. You know that was a long time ago if there was snow in the picture, and there was a lot of snow, too. When was that? The 17th of November? Yeah, bro, that was a long time ago. You can see the steady progression as the snow, oh, it uh, just disappears, you know? Hey, there we got some more deer. Just does, but, you know, nothing big yet. So far, just nothing but a bunch of does here. But then again, does are good, and does do taste good. That's originally what I was actually intending to kill this year, but I just never got the right shot on the right doe. If y'all remember, like, the last two times I actually did go deer hunting, I had a good shot on a doe, but then again, that doe was about the same size as Sheba. And I figured, since I'm gonna shoot a doe, it's mainly just for meat. And if I'm going for meat, I probably shouldn't shoot one the same size as my dog. I mean, if I was that hungry, I'd just like, you know, go to McDonald's and get a hamburger. Because it's honestly about the same thing. A Big Mac at McDonald's probably had more calories in it than that entire deer's body. Like, it was a small deer. It was a really small deer. He was 100% a yearling, I can tell you that. Hey, and speaking of that little doe, I believe this is the little doe. But as you can, as you can see right there, like, bro. That is a little deer right there. Oh, whoa, what was that? Bruh, bruh, look, bruh. Oh my gosh, we got some does fighting up here. She's on her back leg. She's in a boxing mite. Like, bro, those deer were over there stinking fighting over a salt block. And actually, speaking of the salt block, right over here it is. And it, it actually looks really, really cool. Like, I don't know how good you can see that, but it's got like a bunch of spikes where the tongue has actually dug in little grooves in it. And just by looking at it, you can tell very easily where their like uh, tongue marks were. They've been licking it right there a lot, right there a lot right there a lot right there a lot right back there a whole lot and it's actually pretty spiky on top a fun little fact about that salt block right there is even whenever the salt block is gone the deer's gonna still gonna be attracted to this to this exact spot and about two months after the block is completely gone there's actually gonna be about a one foot deep hole right there because what's happening is you know even though the block is still together whenever it rains down there's still part of the salt that you know washes off of it and goes down in the dirt and by the time the deer has you know eaten the entire salt block there's been quite a lot of salt that's been washed down in the dirt what that does is that it makes like the dirt underneath the salt block makes it like taste like salt and so the deer will literally eat the dirt i know it sounds crazy but like i'm speaking from experience here about two years ago i had just straight salt pellets which was really big now it's about that big around so you know i just came out here and i just dumped them out nothing really touched them for about the first two months and then they just washed away then nothing touched them for a month and then the second month after they were completely gone i came back and there was just this giant hole right here yeah, I did move the leaves just so that you could actually see the indention. But as you can see, it like dents in. That's where the salt dissolved into the dirt and the deer literally ate a hole in the ground. I don't know, guys, but just salt drives deer crazy. They really like it, I promise. I know that lately we've been getting a whole lot of new gray gangsters and I just want to let y'all know that we do have merch available if you would want some. We used to have these hoodies, but unfortunately we sold out in like six days. There's still like two sizes left where you can get one. If you're one of those sizes, hey, maybe you're lucky, maybe you can still get one. But if your size is sold out, we also have t-shirts available. This one here being the Bucky Doesn't Play Games. And recently we dropped a Mark II Bucky edition called Legends Never Die shirt. Right here it is. It's really like one of my favorite. It's majestic, I will say that. What a majestic graphic. But yeah, great gang, I just want to let y'all know, thanks for watching, people. I don't know what to do right now, but hit the like button and leave me a good comment. Besides that, I'll see you later sometime tomorrow. Actually, not tomorrow. I'll see you Saturday. But the same thing, basically. Sigo de Rebo